Yeah, yeah, yeah. Issue with Instagram. Gotta redo it again. Let's talk. Hold on, guys. Guys, gotta gotta put my pen in. No. Okay, we're gonna do a sound check first, guys. Let's do a little sound check. Make sure we're good on sound, guys. As Instagram gets a little tricky sometimes. So we just wanna make sure all the sounds good. You guys can hear me. I spelled Mr. Butler's name right. Yes. All right, let's see if I can connect him with us. Here we go. Behave, Instagram. Oh, look at that. It's not behaving. It won't let me request. Oh, it's one of those days, you guys. There, let's see. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Wait, that's not fair. I didn't know a dog was going to be in this. <laughs> oh, look at those guys. What's up, man? Hey, how are you? I'm going to do a sound check really fast here for you guys. Guys, make sure you can hear okay. Give us a little thumbs up and make sure we can yeah. see Mr. Butler clearly and then we'll get started. Game we got, we got oh, a lot there. I got mine. I got mine right here. Yeah, it's been a slow start day for me. I had a late night last night. <laughs> you look it. Yeah. You look it. You look it. All right. I, I got a thumbs up from everyone. Now, let me get started. Hello, everybody. This is you, Sai. Welcome to Let's Talk. And today is Friday. And I'm ending my week with my old friend that we haven't seen just for about 10 years, I think. We're going to count back in history and see when was the first time we met. But I'm none other yeah. than Russ Butler with us. And I'm so excited you can join me today. What's up, guys? Yeah, I'm glad uh, glad to be here and chat with my old buddy. We <laughs> literally has been about ten years. I believe a it's little bit years. less, maybe a little less. But you know, it was crazy. Um, I've seen how amazing, successful your career has become since the first time we shot together, and and I'm gonna revisit some of that stuff. But before we do that, let me just give a little shout out to everybody who's been supporting this show. So as you know, everyone, for every guest that come on the show, we're donating five hundred masks to. First responders. Thus far, we have raised over 80,000 masks. So if you guys wish to support and donate, you can go to our website. And there it is. Live. Let's wow. Com. So every guest that comes on thus far, we donate 500 and the guests either match it or do beyond. So some of the guests have donated up to 30,000 masks. So I'll go is 100,000. I'm almost there. So nice. go part, guys. All right, so let's get talking. Let's go. Yeah, man. So what's been going on the last 10 years with you? Last 10 years, man. <laughs> I mean, for people that don't know, you, you, Isai and I, we shot a, a Coca-Cola campaign like, yeah, I'd say eight years ago. I, I, I wanted Because I moved out 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago. Well, and let's, let's start from there. So where were you before? You were in uh, Singapore? I was in D.C. No, no, no. I, I, I was born in Singapore, but um, I, I moved to D.C., or Northern Virginia when I was four, and then I lived there until I was twenty. So like I was raised there. Um, yeah, and then I, I and then I went to Ohio State for a year. I dropped out, moved back to DC, then decided I wanted to move to LA. Not even to become an actor, I just wanted to move to LA. And then uh, yeah, that was two thousand ten. And then then how we did, shot. How did how did you even thought to move to LA if it wasn't for the acting bug or modeling bug? Um. I don't know. It's because I had been to California before for like SAT prep over the summer. So like I, I'd been to Santa Barbara. I'd been to San Diego. Um, I'd been to LA a couple times and I just loved it. And I, I loved the vibe. And um, even though I was raised academic, I, I always felt like I wanted to be an entertainer. And I felt like this was kind of the place to be, even though I didn't know I want to act. Um, but so what yeah. Were you studying I, college? What was your, what was your major? Uh, biomolecular and chemical engineering. Uh, that I, I knew how to do. I will pre med right here. This is yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I remember I was talking about that. Yeah, it's like uh, the cultural expectation of like <laughs> being academic and, and absolutely. Yeah, well, here's something I want to set everybody up so they know that. So I 
was shooting a Coca-Cola campaign about, I would say actually about eight years ago. And yeah. during that time, I was ambassador of Coca-Cola and we weren't only just shooting the campaign, we were looking for talents that can actually represent a brand outside of just being a model. And this is way before Instagram, way before all the people looking for yeah. influencers. We were way ahead of our time. So the casting was very much like American Idol. It was insane. The thousands and thousands of people show up for over two weeks time. And we narrowed down to 500 to 300 to 200. And then we had cast of 14 that we need to fill. And I remember you so well, because people didn't realize who I was a photographer. They didn't know what I looked like. So I would walk through the crowd. I would just walk through the crowd, look at the people who come in for casting. And I would just yeah, I, remember that. I, would, I would take a little phone pic. I would take a little picture of Polaroid and send it to my assistant and say, hey, pull this person out of the crowd, pull that person out of the crowd. So in this particular genre we were, we were casting for, it was for the Asia market. So mm -hmm. interesting enough that we were looking for Asians, but we were looking for people who would, who would look like they would live in Asia. It sounds funny to say that, but we were looking for white people, dark-skinned people, everybody who were very Benetton-ish, but we needed somebody who kind of has a crossover, a uh, little bit whitey, a little bit Asian-y, <laughs> a little bit a combination of both. And international, yeah. we like to say international. International, yeah, international. the international market, yeah. <laughs> and here this guy who was six foot three, stood up mm -hmm. out of the crowd, from far away I could see him. And you had this like, just like, like, dude, like just an energy of like, not really like care. You weren't like, I need to go to the car. <laughs> you didn't give a crap. You were just like, dude, I'm here to hang out. And I remember going up to you, I go, where you from? He's like, oh yeah, I just got to LA. And I'm like, oh, okay, he doesn't even want this job. He doesn't even care. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the reason I fell in love with you. I love the idea funny, that you man. weren't there in line waiting just so that you can get this part you wanted so bad. Because we, listen, that's good, that's great. But in this particular casting, we're looking for people who are just truly authentic. And, yeah. and, and, and amazing enough, I didn't even know you were going to be a star, but I take a little bit of credit of finding that star in you in the <laughs> thousands of people were casting. So yeah, it, it was, was awesome. It, we, we, we shot for really like a week. It was like a week shoe. <laughs> yeah, it was really long. I remember because the first like the first few days, it was raining every day, too. So I think like every, oh, my God. <laughs> I cannot believe you have that. I have them all. Oh my of god! Of course, I have them all. Oh, you, you gotta send me some of those, man. I will. That is hilarious. So this part of this is that, Russ, that and for those of you guys, I'm gonna laugh throughout this whole interview because it's been such pleasure and memory of working together. Is that when you shoot for a brand like Coca-Cola, you really do bring that <laughs> energy of bring happiness to everyone. Our campaign was called Open Happiness. Yeah. We created, and it was all about what you felt like the first time you got to taste Coca-Cola. That was the thematic yeah. approach. And and then people don't realize you have to hold the Coca-Cola in a certain way. They're the yes. rules. They're rules. <laughs> you had to hold it right before the logo, no thumb yeah. underneath the bottle. Because you know how you hold a bottle of Coca-Cola? Normally people hold a drink like this. So they yeah. can support it. But no, that's not the rule. You gotta hold it this way. And your hands look ginormous. <laughs> we're like, you're covering the logo the entire time. We're like, <laughs> Oh but, my God. And you got to tell people, this is your first photo shoot, right? This was your very first was, job. It was my very first job ever. And um, that's so funny because I've been like castings for, but I was like never a model. So I think that's why, like when I was at this casting, I was like, I'm not going to get this job. I kind of just want to hang out and like, because it was a really cool casting. Um, but yeah, no, I remember when we were shooting, like it was all about like spreading out your fingers and uh, I, to this day, I <laughs> like if I'm drinking a bottle or something, I always like, Huh, like I'm not even kidding. Some people will say that just for like an interview, but um, yeah, I genuinely like hold a bottle a certain way still to this day. Well, how did you even hear about the casting? First of all, if you were, did you have an agent at the time already? Um, did I have any, I I remember having like a, a kind of like a modeling agent, but I think this was just like an open it was uh, an, an open, open call. call. We yeah, did, I think I we literally did Craigslist, Facebook, and we did yeah. the whole blanket of LA. I think you came from like LA casting. I remember that yeah. you didn't have an agent, and we had to get hold of you and figure out if you were going to show up. This is the thing, right? <laughs> when people don't have agents, we don't know they're actually going to show up or not. We don't know they show up that day, like just hanging yeah. out, and they're like, "Dude, I don't want to do this," you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's but so it was, funny. It was. I mean, you're laughing now because I laugh because that was so. It's so crazy, and and I know you knew at that time was that one week after I shot you, then we shot your friend Noah. 
Yeah. You know, and I just saw that. Right again? Centineo. Mega star right now, right? He's just yeah. blowing up. And, and during that entire week, two weeks of shooting Coca Cola, we end up casting all these amazing potential actors who become mega stars, including yourself. And little okay. did we know that the, the process of that process of casting was so, so unconditional, yeah. un 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 traditional to yeah. what the industry was doing. And we were doing something that actually found stars without knowing. I mean, it was, it yeah. was an incredible magical time. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It was like in an age before Instagram. Because I remember I got an Instagram after that. Like, and right. even that, when I got it, my friend was like, oh, it's just like this new app. <laughs> you can edit photos. I was like, I don't get it. But um, God, that's so weird that, yeah, it was after like the social media, the mass social media age. Uh, yeah, and you guys really, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta stop with these photos, man. You gotta send them. To me. I, I love um, them because, uh, because you know, one of the things that we talked off talked about offline. Is I, I really wanted you to be here because you you are that international Asian representation that you broke so many boundaries just being on um, Riverdale and then having this mega stardom in Thirteen Reasons Why. And before before you were on screen, when we think about Asian guys, it was I think it was Glee. You know, they cast yeah, him in the last show. name. Yeah. And it was great, but it was typical, like, like it, it was very typical Asian caricature, right? Yeah. And, and every time you cast an Asian girl, she dates a black guy. And Hollywood, but yeah. Grey's Anatomy. And they all do the same formula in, in ER. And, and it was just really stereotype. And just what, yeah. I guess, the Western culture felt like, if you're going to cast an Asian guy or an Asian girl, these are what they're going to be. And when I saw you, I didn't see Riverdale, I'll admit that, because it's not my demographic, but 13 Reasons Why I was absolutely a crazy fan of. And mm -hmm. when I saw you on that show, I couldn't be more proud of the industry and the, the, the showrunner understood yeah. that, okay, you know what? We can have an Asian guy play a character normally went to a, a, a quarterback you know, do that is like Tom Brady like character. How many times you go to casting breakdown? We need an all American dude to play Jock. How did this casting came about, and what was the process for you to get that role? Wow, that that was so long ago, but uh, it's weird to think about. But yeah, I mean Brian Yorkie, he's a showrunner, and he comes from writing theater. He's a playwright, um, and he's actually, and you know, he's a white guy, but he's actually been in support of like having Asian leads in non stereotypical ways in his plays for like decades like he, uh -huh. it's something that he's always so like being able to talk to him about it and him being on the same page was amazing but yeah i mean originally the the, the role wasn't written asian it was just zach and in the book it didn't specify what race he was um but yeah i mean i just auditioned and you know i was up against a few couple of people and and um when i got it i was just like uh <laughs> I, I mean, like, Riverdale, I think, was the first one that I, I played, like, a jock. Or, you know, actually, Casey on the cover with Zendaya, that was, like, the first role that I got that was, like, a jock-ish right. role. He wasn't a jock, but he was jock-ish. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the conversations came up, and my big thing is, is, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm very proud of being part Asian, of being Malaysian and Chinese on, on my Asian half, um, and I love to represent that in ways but it, it, at the end of the day i'm american like i was raised american yeah. and this is the culture that i associate with the best like i wouldn't go to china and try to pass myself off as like a chinese actor <laughs> and like try to like be in their in their chinese culture like because that's just not who i am um but yeah to represent like the asian american side um uh the the brian york and all the people i've worked with they made it very i, I made it very clear what i want to do and they've been on board so uh, yeah, it's been a crazy like six, seven years where it's flipped from me only auditioning for these stereotype roles to now it's like colorblind casting it, it, and we still got some, we, we still got some steps to go, but um, it's been a massive change in the past five, six years. But it's interesting, your character on the show also did not focus on your race. What I love yep. about that show is that it's so so diverse but it wasn't focused on this character being black or this person being asian this person being being um hispanic and therefore they react a certain way in fact every character reacted where they are because that's who they are whether you want to say that's western culture or american but 
it, yeah. it, it has its own definition based on their own storyline rather than I'm this way because I'm an Asian person. And that's, that was very refreshing to see. And also, yeah. I think by, by, the, by episode six, it, it sounds weird to say, but we've forgotten that you're Asian. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, like the only reference made to my race in it was uh, when my mom in the yes. show calls me Zach Shangyong Dempsey. And that's the only time there's like any reference that you She was culture. very stereotyped, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, she, <laughs> she was but, but not mom in, like, everybody's mom in China. I'm sorry. Yeah, she yeah. yeah. She, but she wasn't like Asian stereotype. Like, she, uh, of course, the, there is a stereotype that Asian moms are tiger moms, but she was also just a strict mom. But she then was. she wasn't expecting me to be like an academic. She was just like, no, focus on sports, do this and that. And so she was just a strict, very proactive mom. Um, was she like your mom? No, in real life, uh, <laughs> kind of, kind of, yeah. I mean, in real life, the actress that played my mom is nothing like my mom, but the character she <laughs> played was like my mom. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I think for you mom. a six foot three man in real life or in acting, you need somebody who's a tiger mom to get you in control. I, God, <laughs> I gave my mom so much hell when I was younger. Like she, she had such a hard time wrangling me in. <laughs> but what I is it like you that. think? And now that you, you, you have, I say that you've broken the stereotype. I remember when you got casted, there was so much article around you all over the world. It was in Asia, I actually heard it from a Singapore. Um, oh, wow. news because I worked so much in Asia, you know, I went back to yeah. Asia to do television shows, hosting cooking shows there. And also I do a Asia's Next Top Model there as a judge and host. So right. I actually didn't know that you got this role. It wasn't until I was in Asia working and then there's a huge news like, oh my God, Western culture breaking boundary, hiring, you know, casting an Asian person. Now, you're not the first Asian that's on TV however right no. there's there's loss we have we have um uh, uh so many most of them yeah, are there's doctor lost, shows. There's anatomy. yeah yeah no, <laughs> I mean, there's... Are doctor shows because it seems like that's where they belong <laughs> yeah. but i i i think that we are getting closer and closer in this industry feel responsible i think to to make sure that we are including and then and inclusion is so important to me i wanted you here because next week I'm actually focusing on the entire week talking to Asian models that who have been, who, who is represented by an agency called Nomad and um, Coco Rocha, who is a white model, opened this agency to bring Asian models into the Western culture, which is fascinating to me that it took a white woman <laughs> to, to open the door for Asian people where Asian population is actually combined is more than Western population, right? So we're gonna have those conversations yeah. and we're gonna learn a little bit about these models, how how they work through the, the, the bureaucracies and the stereotype and how they how themselves have their own journey, how they break the, the barriers. But for you, do you now go into audition still thinking, well, I'm Asian American or American Asian and I may not get this role because of this? Yeah, I, I will say it, it's not as much in my mind. Um, it, uh, for now, it's not, uh, if it's right for the character, now I'm thinking of like quotas. So like, mm. if they have an Asian lead and I'm auditioning for the lead, I'm like a real question that I have with the producers and directors is like, is this something realistic that you're, for a story for you to have two Asian leads? It's like, of course I would love that. Um, and of course I want representation, but the, we have to ask ourselves what is realistic? Like, cause we can't swing too far in the opposite direction. You know, because before we were massively unrepresented, we now shouldn't aim to create an unbalanced ratio in the fact of like having an all Asian cast for an American story. You know what I mean? Um, it has we, to be appropriate. We, what you're saying that it has to fit the part and appropriate. It has to fit the part. It has to be appropriate. And of course, there can be two Asian leads. Um, for example, Crazy Rich Asians. That makes perfect sense. Perfect sense that it's an Asian led cast. And it's amazing that that was a thing. But if you have like an American high school story and you have like everybody's Asian. But wait I'm a like, minute, if you live in Diamond Bar, California, that would be <laughs> realistically true. <laughs> and I was going to say, you know, that, that it, it, it happens. It absolutely happens. Or like Westchester and down, <laughs> like, I, I get it. Um, but then that, and then, and that is an American story, but is, it's like, but what story are you trying to tell? You know like, what I mean? Absolutely right. For 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 TV show like Fresh Off the Boat, it did not. It would yeah. not make sense that everybody's white, right? <laughs> yeah. Fresh Off the Boat make any sense? But Constance to be 
from Taiwan yeah. and she has represented Taiwanese community and the culture from Taiwan. It yeah. she can it doesn't make sense that she's black playing that character. So Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and I think that like if if we're trying to fight for Asian stories to be portrayed like, you know, we we've had the whitewashing issue and, and if we yes. really want Asian people to play Asian characters, we have to respect the reverse as well like you know they're casting like hercules now and somebody tweeted like ross should be hercules i'm like that doesn't make sense like i i'm Why flattered not? i think they just want to see you shirt off we'll get back to that <laughs> I, I gotta get back in shape after this after this quarantine situation but um but it just doesn't make sense like he's a greek god and i mean and sure he, he's a god so i guess it's like you could you could race bend a little bit but or if you were to do a story about like the, the Romans, like of, of course it just wouldn't make sense for like the emperor of the Romans to be but Asian. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be awesome that it does make sense at some point? Wouldn't it be awesome that it doesn't matter? Because it, it, yeah. I get it in act, for me, for example, I completely understand what you're saying. I can tell you as an Asian photographer growing up in America and I'm an Asian American, I came here when I was like 12. So I grew up in Midwest, Indiana you know, and then moved to California. But for me, I'm always, I still today ask the question, am I going to get this job? Would it help me being Asian getting this job? Or would I not get this job because I'm Asian? It, and, and there's so many layers to those questions, right? Am I going to yeah. get the job because I'm gay or I'm not? Am I going to get this job? And the last question I ask myself, am I going to get the job because I'm talented? I'm good at what I'm doing. Because those are the insecurity yeah. that we are bred into our Asian culture. You know, I'm, I grew up, in a very competitive culture, right? You you gotta mm -hmm. be academic, you gotta be first in your class, you gotta do this, or if you're not first, you're not good enough, right? And then when you come to this country, I don't know how it is for your family, my mom, my dad always says, don't ever forget your skin color. Doesn't matter what color you bleach your hair, doesn't matter what clothes you wear, you always have brown eyes and yellow skin. Not so much true these days, we can change that too. But the point, <laughs> is, the point of it is that they were a constant reminder that I have to remember I'm Asian. And whether or not because we live in Indiana, where racial racism, where we used to still have KKK parades on weekends, that we have no choice but remember who we are. Because if we don't, then we're in danger, you know? And, yeah. and to, to have the blessing my family move us to California, where it's that much more integrated society here, that's when I first, that's when I actually became even more aware that I'm Asian. Because there are pockets of communities that are Asian. Yeah. Indiana, there was none. We were the only Asian people in our town. Yeah. And, and, okay, and then I'm like, oh, you mean I can go down to Monterey Park and be Taiwanese for a day and eat Taiwanese <laughs> food? And I can go, go to Chinatown and be I'm from China and eat Shanghai food? And you know what I mean? There, there's a, as much as we're conjoined together, where there's pockets of areas allowed us to be reminded who we are, and then mm -hmm. be able to step aside from it and go, okay, I'm, in, I'm, I'm still in America <laughs> and I still have to learn to speak English because back then mm -hmm. it wasn't so good. And, but, but as we evolve, I wanted to be an actor when I was young. I wanted to be on television when I was young. I was at Disney, I auditioned for Disney, I worked for Disney. Really? Disney. Oh my God, I was a Disney kid. I wanted to oh be on God. the Mouse Club so bad. And, That's and, so but, funny. But let me tell you the funny story, Ross, is that when I first started, I would go to a central casting and I would uh -huh. go to this audition. And central casting, for you guys who don't know, it's pretty much, back then it was a, you call in, there's no internet. Yeah. You call in and they have a recording, looking for a six foot three, tall, dark hair, blue, uh, brown eyes, Asian-esque guys, and show up at this time. And people who are in that category would show up. I show up with everything. It would be like, <laughs> yeah. We're looking for a white girl, <laughs> I showed up. I, and because I did not have a, a understanding while we're being categorized. And because of that, I started getting castings. I started getting parts. Now I wasn't, and I, I didn't continue to pursue that career for many different reasons. Uh, insecurity in my accent, insecurity in my height, insecurity of my, my looks. And, and, and again, I didn't see a lot of Asian people on television at that time, yeah. honestly. Like at Disney, guess what character I'm gonna play? Aladdin, you know? <laughs> Man, I, I can see it. I see it. <laughs> hey, these days I can play Mulan too, okay? I can yeah, Mulan. yeah, you can go either way. It's, <laughs> it's 2020. <laughs> Back then, no, but now we're progressive now. We can do yeah. more. But that's what I mean by like, it's such a weird dynamic that continue to happen in our industry that we are constantly have to find a way to adjust, you know? And, and, and at what point, what's the balance, right? What is actual true balance uh, for, 
for at least for our industry in the entertainment industry, what is a true balance for you? Um, true balance. Uh, I I think because I'm also moving into the production side of things and and looking at the industry about like the sellability of something. It, it, the, the balance is finding like representation of where it fits or where you can start to push the boundary. You know what I mean? It, it, it's like if you have if you have a sci-fi movie that's like set in the future, right? Where it's just like you don't need to focus on race. Like race is something that's been mixed. You can push that boundary. And I'll try. Kind of, I mean, yeah, with Gober, and then you know you have exactly uh, yeah. where where the races are a lot more integrated. Or if you have mixed race people, or it, it's like if you have a race of people going to Mars, like uh or earth earth people going to mars you can cast those roles as any race it, it's like we don't know because we haven't been there yet whereas if you're looking to the past like i said with like you, you have romans or ancient china yeah you, you should be a little bit more um, you're a realist, you're a realist. I'm, I'm a realist and, and, and but yeah where and just finding where to push the boundaries realistically so like yeah for all these high school jock rules i was like why aren't there like what oh, like what is there stopping um culture not only culturally but just in general from there being an asian jock there is isn't education it's like yeah i mean okay listen only asian jock everybody seems to know is michael chan who played tennis okay i get it <laughs> like, with there there's yang Ming who played base basketball you guys there's, exactly there's Ming, so, but yeah. it's so little representation in that way and also it's not just what's on screen for me I'm a proponent in having Asian people on my crew. I want an Asian makeup mm -hmm. artist at times. I want an Asian crew. Because I do think that in our industry, I don't know if you feel that, but Asian people compete against themselves first, then they oh, yeah. start competing against everybody else, right? It's like you, you have two battles to fight, not just one. Yeah, and and it, it, it's funny you say that because, yeah, there's a lot of infighting in our community. Just and I think that is because of um, just culturally, like, China, Japan, Korea, like there, Taiwan, like there, there's so much infighting where it, it gets in the way sometimes. But um, yeah, the, the Asian community has in the last few years, as far as I've seen, has started to come together a lot and started to push in um, it, because I think within our community, there, there also is two battles that we're fighting as a whole. Like we're battling for Asians to play Asian roles and then Asians to play not Asian role. But you also um, mentioned, it's very poignant what you said, if the lead is already Asian, how many other roles would be collectively in that film? And I wonder if that works the same for, for African Americans. Oh, the, you know, Isaac Alba is already playing this yeah. role. It's another black person's gonna ask the question, can I be in this movie? Because Isaac Alba is already there. I don't know the answer to that. When I get to talk to Isaac Alba, I'll ask him. But the, <laughs> but the, but interesting that, that for, especially during this pandemic, I became very I, sensitive and very aware of these issues, right? Because the, the diseases came from, you know, the, the, the virus came from China and during yeah. the first six weeks of this pandemic, you know, I felt those negativity. I felt the word racism all over again, right? And that has to do with our lack of education from television and a lack of, lack of understanding what this whole pandemic is about. But we are marginalized now and now, the, in a, when I work with publications in Asia, and they're so sensitive now about celebration being Asian, and, mm -hmm. and that pendulum starting to swing, right? It's starting to swing the other way again, and and I hope to be able to help to to, to support them in any way I can possibly can because I do think that pendulum needs to swing really far, at least once to find the equilibrium back, you know. And, and we haven't swung that far for the Asian community. I feel, you know. As far as celebrating being Asian, and, or, and at least in Western culture, in the Western culture, with with a Western understanding, right? And yeah. I'll give you a funny story about when Rich, Crazy Rich Asian came out, and before it was filming, I was asked actually to be part of that production, and I was in the middle of another show, and I and they talked about the character doesn't want to be a photographer on the show, and I was like, I'm not. That's a stereotype. You're gonna have me play a photographer? That's what I do for a living. Of course, I regret it. I didn't do the job. <laughs> so, <laughs> but. I was too busy. It was conflict of, of scheduling. It wasn't because I didn't want to. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, next one, I would definitely do whatever the schedule is. I'll show up. But, <laughs> but, but then my white friends called me and DM me. goes, I didn't realize Asian people are so funny. And I was like, did you just really say that? Because my response to him, he's a friend, so I can say this. I was like, I didn't realize white people were so dumb. 
like to him. I was not saying white people are dumb, guys. Just yeah. don't, don't give me, don't give me, don't yeah, give me yeah, yeah. for saying that. It was a, it was a direct immediate reflection because I, I didn't know how to take it. It's a really good friend of mine. I'm looked, I go, does he realize how racially wrong that conversation was? Like, like. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a it's an interesting thing because uh, you know the stereotype is that we all look alike, right? But I mean, as you can clearly- I wish I looked so. like you. So yes, we look alike, well, great. <laughs> yeah. we, you, say, you, and I, you and I both look alike, but we're the, we're the rare occasion. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, is that like, yeah, no, I mean, a lot of people can't tell the difference between Chinese, Japanese, Korean visually, sure. um, like we can, because we notice, but it's also the, the flip side of that is that, yeah, a lot of people can't tell German from Austrian, from Dutch, from- But that's from interesting you say that. Do people come up to you and say, are you Chinese? Are you Filipino? Are you Thai? Do people still ask you that? Uh, yeah, a lot of people still, yeah. I mean, and it's interesting and that's fine. Like, I honestly don't have a problem with someone asking me like, what is my heritage? And, and that, because yeah, I am mixed and it's uh, like, I'm weird to look at. But like, um, <laughs> the, the, the flip is that, yeah, you know, is, like, yeah, it, it's just because our culture has been so uh, stereotyped that we've all been lumped in one, mm -hmm. uh, one like country that. of origin, right? Like, oh, the Chinese, China. And then that's what's kind of led to this um, in educate or uh, about people like associating coronavirus with all Asian people. And, and I haven't talked about it too much on, on social media for one particular case is because if you're not educated enough to know the difference between China, there's first of all different Asian races, but also Asian American, like Chinese American versus Chinese. And if you're blaming Chinese Americans for a, a China for a Chinese virus, then there's then, no reason but, to even talk to them. Yeah, I mean you're not going to get it anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> it's so th that's where I'm at. It's just like you know. I think young people understand the difference. Whereas like the people that don't understand the difference are people that aren't going to get it. So I'm focusing on the positive and, and You're trying to battle. You're choosing your yeah, battle. Yeah, I'm choosing the battle. And, and like, I'm just trying to continue to represent us uh, Asian Americans in the best way that I can and, and show that, yeah, we, we value our heritage and we're proud of our heritage, but that isn't what we grew up in. That's not our culture. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I think th we are breaking down and people are definitely starting to know the difference between Korean and Chinese and Japanese because where these cultures are starting to be represented in on Netflix a lot more. Like there's uh, tons of Korean movies on Netflix. Now. The best. The, I mean, we, a Korean movie winning Oscars. That was a such yeah. a pivotal of history. But it's I do feel like in Hollywood, for example, five years ago, four years ago, you know, the, the, the consensus that there wasn't enough black people represented and there's not enough black people on stage. And then all of a sudden we get all, all the black people are winning all the awards. And then we go, there's not enough Asian people represented, then a bunch of Asian people. <laughs> and, and, and that equilibrium is really hard to find. And I'm glad it's swinging the other way. I'm glad I'm seeing all the, the different races, the people that it's being represented. I know that sometimes it plays for my benefit. I will admit that because four years ago, when the, Hollywood was getting in so much trouble that it's so whitewashed. I mm -hmm. got a job to do the red carpet at the Oscars. And I guarantee you, if there wasn't that pendulum swinging that way, nobody would have called me. I yeah. knew I got that job because of my skin color. I knew I got that job because they couldn't tell which Asian I was. Because yeah. no, no I, my biggest argument in my life is people go, you're not Chinese, you don't look Chinese. When I'm in Thailand, they'll say, oh, you look like you're Malaysian. When I'm in Malaysia, no, you look like you're from Taiwan. When I'm in Taiwan, you just yeah. know what your Taiwan is. You must be mixed. No, 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 you, you have a white in you. Yeah. My whole life. Because I don't have the, again, I never fall into the stereotypical look and I don't know yeah. whatever that look that people say Asian supposed to look yeah. like. Right? Nor do I have the personality either, so. Yeah. <laughs> of the stereotype. Yeah, I mean, all these, um, what you're saying about the, the, the pendulum swinging, it's like, yeah, it's these trends and it comes in waves and there's there's eras where it's just like a different focus on, on different races. And every single time that happens, we chip away a little bit yes. at this stereotype. So, yeah, I mean, the only thing is, is like, it's, no, it's, it's, not it's consistency. 
It's like a yeah. wrecking ball. It's not even a pendulum. Yeah. It's like a wrecking ball. It needs to freaking break some walls and break some boundaries. Yeah. And you're doing that being you. And that's what's really fascinating to me. And that's why I'm so proud of you is that <laughs> you are not actively trying to break boundaries. You're just doing what you love. And through that, the walls are breaking. And, and you, I, I want you to know that. I want you to know <laughs> Thank without you, you, you're not, listen, I don't open the magazine and use like champion for Asian people, but your action, what you're doing, the roles that you're getting and the way you portray your characters speak loudly, you're doing that. And I think that says greatly about who you are as a person and the characters you play, you know? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, um, I used to be a lot more vocal about it and I, I've kind of changed my strategy less from like, less from this wrecking ball and more to like just a, a strongly flowing river it's constant pressure we're constantly like just constantly being in the eye and constantly working on projects that's what's going to tell the story um I've, I've switched from a show rather than tell strategy of like just taking on roles that can show what i'm trying to say better than i can say it because you know the fans will read it and the fan again just kind of like the distinction between chinese and chinese american the fans that our, uh, our mind know my story <clears throat> and those are the people that go out of the way to read like an interview I do about this particular subject but for the people that aren't that that don't know who I am that don't know my name um, and just watch the projects that's what's going to change their mind not an article about like an interview that I do specifically on it but about watching a story being told um, about a high school jock that you know has to deal with cultural um, uh, cultural expectations versus what he wants um so yeah, I mean, it's um, it, it, it's finding the balance in that too because yeah, I, I don't want to seem like I'm like. Oh, you're uh, not complacent. I know what you mean. You, yeah. Your silence is not your complacency, and I think that's yeah. really important. And I think that's why right. we I wanted you to be on the show to talk to you about this stuff because people do often think that being silent is is complacency. Actually, your action speaks louder than words most of the time. And, exactly. and, and one of the most important thing I know about you that you're in a position now choosing roles that you want and choosing roles mm -hmm. that you take. And that is speaking loudly. And that's what I mean by, by being mm -hmm. in the position where you are. Now you're in a producing role that you're, you're crafting, you're working on new shows. And, and I know because of this journey, you're gonna have more sensitivity of the next journey, whether mm -hmm. or not it's in the, it's in a crew or is it behind a camera in front of the camera i think it goes goes wider and broader than just what you see in front of the camera right there are so yeah. many talented people in this industry now i would never hire a makeup or hairstylist just because they're asian i hire them because they're incredibly talented they're good. and they yeah. happen to be asian now two next to each other i hope i can be colorblind and pick whoever is appropriate for that job and i, I think that's important but yeah. i do I, I'm a proponent of celebrating shooting with an Asian crew if I'm working on an Asian magazine. Because I get very confused when I look at, let's say, Japanese Vogue, for example. It's run by a French woman. <laughs> it's like, and there's never Asian people on the cover. But it's, it's like, why don't you not call it Japanese Vogue? Because I don't get it. And I'm from yeah. the fashion industry. I, 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 I get it, but I don't. I, I think it's perpetuation of, of self-hate sometimes with, with these publications. Mm -hmm. and, and then there are publications like Harper's Bell Singapore, I work with a lot, and, and Vogue Thailand, who make sure that they're shooting local talent. They're celebrating local people. Yes, everybody wants Jennifer Aniston on their cover because they sell yeah. the magazine. <clears throat> but you have to take the time and effort just to celebrate your own kind, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. J just like you said, there's the days where you can go Diamond Bar or whatever, and and, and you can hey, celebrate. That's where my mom lives, by the way, guys. That's where I, my mom lives. That's why I really? Yeah, I go to Diamond Bar and play mahjong all the time. <laughs> oh my god! I'm very oh. Asian in that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, of course, it's important to know your heritage, and and, and your heritage is interesting. That's mm -hmm. it, it's like you know, again, like I told you, I've been or I was learning Chinese. I, I've started learning Japanese now, even though like I'm not like. I don't have a ton of China, uh, Japanese in my blood, but it's a reminder of um, kind of like the generation before you, what they had to deal with, especially for me, like, you know, growing up, not seeing any Asian actors in TV and movie. It's just a reminder of, and it's an, it's to inspire yourself that like, yeah, you're changing this now for the next generation. And um, it's, th that, that's all we can really do is just uh, is all we can really hope for if you're ambitious is to leave the world a little bit different than how you came into it and set it up for the next people and the, make the next asian american generation feel less lonely or make them feel more included um 
And you it, are, it, but uh, to, to, I'm sure you've been told this, that, you know, in different generations, for my generation, I'm older than you. Guys, I am older than him, even though I look younger, mm -hmm. right? But I was gonna, yeah, I was, we, we we're looking about mid twenties, both. <laughs> yeah. So so you know back then uh, when I turned on the television, I didn't see anybody that I can relate to or understand that mm -hmm. there's possibilities, right? And then and what you're doing now is letting people know there's lots of yeses possibilities, and those, yeah. and those yeses are yes, you can play a superhero. I mean, you play a superhero <laughs> in tights, yeah. even, you know. <laughs> so yes, yeah. you can play a superhero in tights, being Asian American yeah. and whatnot. You, you and can, or you can just be in the entertainment industry. That's yeah. uh, that's the biggest thing that um it's to affect more of the parents of the next generation um just saying that the entertainment industry is lucrative and you can make a career out of it and you can also be happy doing it like that's the, the biggest thing is that asian parents push their kids into jobs that they're not necessarily happy in if you're if you want to be a doctor and that's your passion go for it but if you're more of a creative or not to say that doctors aren't creative i think doctors are super creative but if you want to be in more of the creative arts let's just say right. there, that is a path that you can be very financially secure and you can be happy and, and not and it's cultural right thousands and thousands yeah. of years that son are supposed to help take over the family and even though we don't all do that anymore because everybody are very self-sustaining but culturally it is about that being the male figure in the family and you're going to earn the living and so you can support your family and they all mean very well i have to say that the yeah. truth is that the asian culture might it. be so much pressure i get it now i didn't get it when i was younger i was like yeah, oh, yeah. it's forcing me to do this shit, you know like literally stop you know and and when i wanted to be an artist when i was young my parents are like, well, you want to be poor for the rest of your life? This is not poor enough. You don't see how much we struggle now. You want to be even yeah. poor. You know? and, and it wasn't until, it was funny enough, because I graduated in pre-med. I finished my biology, zoology degree. So I have my lots of science degrees. And then yeah. and I got accepted to Art Center in Pasadena. And my family did not understand at first until they saw an article in a Taiwan newspaper of the women who designer who designed uh, Ford Taurus, number one selling car in Ford history. And it says, wow. designed by a Taiwanese designer. Mm. All of a sudden, you should go to our center. <laughs> you need to go. And, I'm that, like, and that's what they need. They just need somebody that's like prominent because again, it's, it's a lot of it is about face. It's about like um, the prestige of it. Like if you can get your name in the paper for designing something, like that's what Asian parents love is like, oh yeah. Like but the don't prestige. you feel like maybe, I don't know you feel this, but being a mixed race growing up, I'm sure there was a lot of teasing, there's bullying, people don't know who you're from, they question you, I don't know how that was like for you. But for me in middle America, you know, mm -hmm. I, it was constantly, I, everybody was like, Daniel-san, Daniel-san, because the movie was out and there was an Asian person, and his name was yeah. out there for, and I was in, I get in fights every single day, it, just because there was so, there was so much uneducated people, you know, yeah. and kids are just mean to begin with. And through that time, you stop, building self-doubt and self-hate of who you are, right? And yeah. when somebody, there's so many different types of bullying, but when you start bullying people because of race and their look, they can't change that. To what it does to you inside, yeah. it's completely different than just bullying you because you don't, you're don't you a nerd, or bullying you because you're not a jock, or bullying you because- Yeah, it's, you have, it's bullying on something that you have no control over, your genetics. Zero control over, right? Yeah. And, and that was, that, that I had to go through, right? I had to go, at some point, this is who I am, and then I had to believe that this is okay to be on television. No, there is a place for me in an entertainment industry. 10 yeah. years ago, do I think I would be here? No, I thought I would just always be behind the camera because I gave up, right? Mm -hmm. I gave up, like, this is where I belong. I'm an Asian dude. I'm not going to get any parts in the movie. I'm never going to be able to go on Broadway. I'm never going to get on Dancing with a Star because I was, you know, forget it. That's it. I'm going to stay behind the camera. But but crazy enough how time has evolved and the pendulum has swung that's, that I yeah. have to be in front of the camera. And, and, and all those things happen because, not because all of a sudden I look different, but definitely has to do the fact that all of a sudden, because my career in photography solidifies itself, build a confidence to know, okay, I can swing the camera the other way. I can be that pendulum and start swinging the other way and break some boundaries, break some walls. And and I have to thank Tyra Banks for that because she put a first Taiwanese on CW. Mm -hmm. And CW made a big deal of it. Now I, was, I didn't even realize it's a big deal, right? Because again, yeah. I've been colorblind after a while. Then I realized, oh my gosh, I have a responsibility. 
like, like you said, yeah. you begin it's, to it's, have it's to go. It's responsibility. It's, it's, um, yeah. And it, it's not something that you, you don't have to feel obligated to be like a, an activist or anything, but you know, I, I think if you are an ambitious person, if you're someone who grew up experiencing something that, what that made you feel less of a human you naturally want to not for the next generation not to feel that absolutely so absolutely yeah so it's just about like how you're raised and i think being asian american and growing up in america versus growing up in asia and then coming to america that is a big difference in i think your your goal setting as far as like what you want to do in this industry where it's just like if you come from Asia and you were raised there, it's like, oh, I can always go back and I can be with the people that look like me and I can be with, and I have a, I, I have a, that um, I was raised with. But if you're grown here and, you know, I, where I grew up was a little bit more diverse than Indiana, but still, I, yeah, it, we were still dealing with stereotypes. It's um, well, if you, you also with, younger, so you came into the country, you came over when diversities already permeated in television. Yeah, so yeah, but, yeah. I mean, but interesting, yeah. you said that about going back home to find a place that where you feel accepted, and this happened for me. And and, and mm -hmm. doing the doing the period of hashtag Me Too movement, and there mm -hmm. was a lot of controversy around that because I was a witness to a situation mm -hmm. that you guys can Google and look up. I don't want to get into that conversation too deeply here. But during that time when that happened, the reminder of decisions I made to defend what's true, it became a core attack that I felt so, not that racism all over again, but a different level. And a different mm -hmm. level of, of I, I, the loyalty where I lie with the industry versus the person who supported me for 12 years in the brand I was working for versus the woman that was assaulted by this situation. I can't say the name because of legal reasons, guys. But, you mm -hmm. but the fact is that at that point, I had to leave. I mm -hmm. physically had to leave America. Where I grew up as an Asian American, I thought this is the place where I'm born. I had to leave because I was being blocked on jobs. I was being blocked by because people who were involved were very powerful. And I was told that you'll never have a career again in this business because what you did. Model agencies and agents were writing me and said, you lost all your power of casting or models that you want to shoot with. We're not giving it to you anymore because you didn't defend XYZ person. You should have defended yeah. that person versus... I left. And can I tell you, it's the biggest blessing that that happened. I would not have a TV show that I've been working on so passionately about going back to Taiwan where I was born and travel mm -hmm. and cook and feed and, and cook for the people who were cooking for others. And that's what the show about. It's called Street to Kitchen yeah. Asia. <laughs> that happened for that reason. So mm -hmm. those moments keep me reminded that every single time these crazy pivotal moments, critical moment that happens in a negative way, it seems like even through this pandemic, it makes me realize something brighter comes from it or something i'm yeah. going to learn from it you know i wouldn't yeah. do this talk right i wouldn't do this talk without being in this pandemic we're in and people would not yeah. have the time or be as vulnerable and share these stories with me if it wasn't doing this time you know honestly yeah it's yeah i just had a talk about this yesterday on ig live with, about mental health and everything and i watched oh did you <laughs> oh yeah i was um yeah and it's cool because it's like uh yeah you know it, it, I, I, and I think we we greatly misunderstand the effect of negative events that happen in your life because what those serve to do that if you look at them crazy is it is it sets you back down to zero mentally it's it's like a reset and makes you um, reanalyze like where you are and, and puts things in perspective because sometimes when when you're super successful and, and and you're building 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 you lose sight and because like you know you're going. Um, you, you lose sight of where you used to be. And then if something like tragic happens or, or something that's really sad or you, you have something to learn- Something you have no control new, over. Zero control. Something you have no control over or something that you have to adapt. Yes. That's when it resets you, you know? Um, so I think like during this pandemic and I've had this conversation with some of my friends is um, a lot of us that are social beings that are like are out a lot and we have a lot of social obligations and we-, we this time, it, it, I'm hearing a lot of my friends that they're getting anxious. It's because they're not used to being alone. They're not used to like being alone with their thoughts and having to analyze themselves and reflect on themselves. <laughs> it's scary, but you know, um, it's necessary though. And you know, I went through this phase because when I moved to LA, I didn't have any friends. I didn't know anybody. I spent a lot of time alone, and it's a lot of time. Like self reflection is going to set you in 
a better direction after this COVID situation. Like if you can understand why you're feeling anxious or why you feel like you need external stimuli to be happy or to be entertained, then it's like, maybe figure that out, maybe figure out why you're being anxious or, um, but yeah. It, and, and I think that can lead to good things. Just like you said, like maybe this COVID situation made you more interested in knowing more about your friends or the people that you've worked with and you've just really been having the time to think about it. And then now you're like, you know what, why don't I just talk to them? And then from that, it's like you learn. So yeah, it, it's like, I, I see always tragedy as, as, as uh, it levels the, it levels the playing field, like with you and your surroundings. It brings I feel you back like it's down funny zero. you said that because I had the similar conversation with a friend of mine and I made this analogy to him. I said, I feel like we're all now not running a, a, a we're running a marathon, but we're on a starting block to run that marathon. We're all on the yep. same starting block now. It's an even playing field. How you want to start your race, it's on you. How you want to pace yourself for the next chapter of all our lives, it's on you because there's never going to be anything like it what COVID is doing to all of us yeah. worldly once in a lifetime see people collectively get bond together people collectively begin to 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 evaluate what matters to them have conversation that matters to them like the one we're having today we would not have this conversation today if it wasn't for the fact that this is happening in the asian community or this is happening worldly right and and mm -hmm. I, I think it's super valuable lesson and for me i know that these pivotal critical points that happens in my life, they're, they're absolutely about reevaluating who I am. And when I begin to try to evaluate who I am, I will always go back to, okay, I'm not that Asian guy who look in the mirror and not love myself anymore. I get, I, I'm over that. Now what's next? What are you gonna do now to be, to make this moment valuable to you when you look back at it, you know? And that- Yeah. And I think the answer is is doing exactly what you're doing now. You're you're hosting this hosting this thing, hopefully for other people to see to help them feel more secure in who they are. And that's like uh, the the lesson. in before you can help everybody else, you have to help yourself. Absolutely. And you've gotten to the point of self acceptance, and now you can help other people with their self acceptance. And, you know? and it's moment in time that you don't realize when you do things like this, it makes other people happy. <laughs> So many of these, I put a plus <laughs> on the internet. Oh my them. god! They're amazing. You gotta send me these, man. And it's yeah. like the stats. Oh my god. Um, that's my Letterman jacket you're wearing, by the way. Finally, oh Joe is wearing my Letterman jacket in high school. That oh was dream come god. true, <laughs> guys. Everyone, <laughs> Ross Butler is wearing my Letterman jacket in school. <laughs> that's so funny, man. Dude, like. It, uh, are, are we allowed to post these or is Coca Cola yes. still over? You're allowed to post them. I'm, I'm going to throw back Thursday. That's so hard. Oh my God. <laughs> no, but thank you so much for sharing these thoughts with me because I know of that course, this is man. not something that is always on the surface, but it's, in, it's embedded in you. And this conversation could go on forever, but I'm going to cut it off soon. Um, thank you for being inspiration without actively trying because that's what's most beautiful. No, that's what's most beautiful for me. And thank you for responding to me after 10 years. It's way too long and that we need to stay connected. And there, right. and the fact that we haven't done a photo shoot since, and you never reach out to me. You'd be like, hey, shoot me. You never did after that. You know what, Russ? Well, you made the money and you ran. You took the cash and you left. <laughs> I just, I wanted to get to the point where I could ask you to shoot and, and because have... you were a big shot. And I was just like, I gotta, I gotta get, I got to get to his level first where, you know, where he, he, we could actually shoot on the same Listen, playing field. I'm the same so, person yes, we'll, on we'll that field soon. when it was raining and still dancing. And, and there, there's shots that you with my, my little baby French bulldog. I mean, we have oh, those campaigns. Soy. soy was on set. So, the guys, I think it's so important for you guys to know this is that from the casting, that takes 4,000 people to narrow down to this wonderful man in front of me and can end up being this mega star, everything is possible. So next yeah. time you're waiting in line for something, just to know, it's worth the wait sometimes, you know? Yeah. And, and just enjoy it. I hate enjoy to say it. this, when you don't give a shit, things happen. <laughs> because it happened for you. Yeah, you don't, you don't need it, all you need is yourself, right? And so don't, yeah, yeah, that's the one thing I would, is have fun, that's it, just have I, fun. <laughs> And, and I'll end with this. Can I tell you guys, those shoe, it may look beautiful and glorious and, and the light was all beautiful. It was raining. It was cold. Everybody was getting sick. It was the, one of the hardest 
photo shoot. Because with the, all that yeah. stuff was happening, I'm like, smile, everybody, look Asian. No, I remember because we were shooting on Venice Beach, but we had, but it was winter, but we had to shoot for summer, and it was the coldest shit I had ever felt in my life. Yes, this is Venice. See the people in oh. the background rollerblading, and so it was freezing. But you know what? Oh, so cool. It was all worth it. Yeah. Oh, I'll worth it. Look at that billboard. Hey, taste, taste the feeling, guys. Taste the feeling. <laughs> Little did you know that one single bottle of Coca-Cola, learning how to hold it, spreading your hand, and I never let the fluid touch your lips yet when I shoot it. Yeah. It's barely touching the... <laughs> You gotta hold it. You gotta hold it like this. You gotta hold it like that. To Coca Cola. To our. To Coca Cola. To our beginning. They should sponsor this talk. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Wow. I'm even wearing the colors here. It's. Well, thank you anyway. so much for your time. And of and course, I will make sure we stay in touch. And please reach out. I would love to photograph you. I'd love to get us on a day that's not freezing. <laughs> we, we do. Yeah. You got a lot of stuff going on and. And we'll share our journey together more offline and online because I really appreciate yeah. the time with you. I, I would love to, man. It was good All talking right. to you. Bye, Take everybody. Care. Thank you, Talk everyone. You well, guys, so that was Russ Butler. How exciting was to have him here. My Asian brother, I know for 10 years ago, cast him in a Coca-Cola campaign and end up creating this beautiful, amazing star. He's just exactly what you think he is. Cool like a cucumber, super nice. And I'm so happy that you guys got to experience our talk together. And this is Friday, so try to enjoy your weekend. And I will be back again, and there's a special feature this Sunday. I will be talking to the editor-in-chief of Harper's Bazaar Singapore about inclusion and what the magazine world like now in the fashion world, as well what has this pandemic done and for the Asian community and how we are champion for positivity within our community. And I'm excited to speak to him as Kenneth Go. He will be with me on Sunday. It's a late hour time because we want to make sure it's daytime in Asia. Until then, I will see you guys next week. I've posted the guest that will be on next week. Next week is super special for me because it's the relationship with Coco Rocha, the agency that she has in bringing Asian models to the Western Hemisphere. So we're going to have a lot of talk with all the models that comes on. Some of them I've worked with before, some of them I haven't. So it'll be nice to reconnect with some of them and listen to their journeys. In the meantime, you guys, everyone, stay safe out there, stay healthy. We'll get through this all together and keep on talking because that does really help. Put a smile on your face, everyone. I'll see you this Sunday. <laughs>